Hello and welcome everyone to this uh, new video where I present a paper uh, which when it came out, uh, I remember, uh, was really um, very influential um, and so many people were talking about it um, and uh, discussing about kind of what that meant and so on on various physics forums and also in various um, uh, you know, uh, project rooms and, and research seminars and so on. Um, and interestingly, this is not necessarily a research paper uh, per se, although, uh, of course, there is uh, a lot of you know, intellectual stuff being put forward and some kind of uh, uh, interesting um, uh, kind of discussions. Um, so I would say perhaps this is um, uh, an article which is at the interface between, uh, well, education, uh, physics research in the in, in the term of theory, so theory, uh, the interpretation aspect of the theory, and also philosophy. And um, this uh, article is titled "There are no particles; there are only fields," and this is by Art uh, Hobson uh, from the University of Kansas, um, Arkansas. Sorry. Um, and um, this was published in 2012, and that was in the American Journal of Physics. Now, the thing is that uh, what, you know, what the, the article is about is precisely what's in the title. Uh, there is a huge emphasis, um, in fact, in the vocabulary being used by, um, uh, you know, by, the, by various audiences, let's say, um, that can be science communicators when they talk to the public, that can be uh, professionals, um, so professional physicists, talking to the public or talking in educational settings that can be uh, teachers uh, and so on. And that can even be professionals talking to professionals. So physicists talking to physicists and so on. There is a huge, uh, let's say, usage um, of the word particle um, in particle physics. Now, the issue with this um, is that actually the theory describing these things is a theory that is all about fields. Um, and in a sense, that's what the message uh, that, he, that the author is trying to put across is that it's kind of strange that we maintain this um, kind of particle-based picture and we always have a tendency to imagine this kind of point-like or spherical kind of billiard balls uh, bouncing on and off each other and so on. Uh, while in fact, we're talking about uh, fields um, and so that's kind of the, the, the main idea of the article. Now, of course, if you see, this is a quite long article, 32 uh, pages. Most of it actually reads very well. Um, American Journal of Physics is a physics journal. Um, depending on the paper, it can be very technical. Um, but the goal is also uh, to influence teaching in the US. Um, and, um, and so here, this is a fairly I'm not saying easy in the sense that uh, there are technical stuff, there are some equations that you have difficulties understanding if you have no knowledge uh, of quantum mechanics whatsoever, or even of quantum field theory. There are some aspects that are difficult to understand. Um, however, uh, most of it is just plain text where the author uh, recounts basically what is typically done, uh, but then what is actually... Um, what the theory actually contains and therefore why we should switch kind of gear when it comes to the vocabulary and the terms we use uh, when looking at high energy physics. Um, and um, and that, that, again, there is no point kind of going through. I mean, if I want to show some of the technical bits, uh, well, here this is general relativity, um, but here there is some equations. So here these are uh, typical equations you will see in quantum field theory, um, the A and A star um, are going to be, um, uh, or at least they are going to correspond to um, creation and annihilation operators um, in quantum field theory. Um, so that's what is written here, operator valued fields. And so these are these guys. Um, and then these things are going to be interpreted as, um, um, depending on the field you look at, um, um, some, uh, you know, some bosons that can be related to the generation of positrons, whatever, depending again on, on the kind of things you look at. Um, so these are kind of things that are a bit complicated looking. Um, 
But I think the author does a great job at making these things fairly readable. And one of the things that he, that the author puts forward is basically that once we embrace the idea that electrons or particles or whatever we want to call particles and so on are related to fields, then ma many things that we used to consider as, as being like mysterious and so on essentially vanish in terms of their mysteriousness. And there are various examples given here. So the two-slit experiment, uh, you see, contains the only mystery according to Feynman and so on, which according to um, this article, well, stops being a mystery if you talk about fields. So that's kind of uh, one of the ideas. And some more exotic uh, you know, effects are mentioned. Um, so here there is the... Um, they mention the quantum vacuum and the notion uh, of the Henry um, effect as well, a very known uh, effect connected to, uh, in part, to the um, kind of Hawking radiation hypothesized, let's say, Hawking radiation mechanism uh, for black hole evaporation. Um, so basically, all of these things do appear in the discussion, uh, and they are you know, less mysterious as soon as or we, we tend to embrace the idea of fields instead of particles. Um, so if you find this thing interesting, I will obviously put a link uh, to this article um, in the description of the video. Uh, I encourage you to have a go at reading it. Uh, this is really um, a very interesting read. Um, and, you know, you may disagree, of, of course, with the author. That's completely fine. Uh, but then you need to be aware about uh, if that's the case, what uh, arguments um, uh, basically people in favor of field only uh, essentially put forward. Um, so uh, that's it. So if you have any questions or comments, by all means, uh, do let me know in the comment section and otherwise see you um, in another video.